When I worked on Wall Street, I was a systems engineer. For a crazy trading day, it's hectic. Uh, you know right from the start it's gonna be a crazy trading day because you come in and you already see the alerts are going off. The trading floor was like a whole way down and like into another room. You would hear everyone yelling and screaming and there's a lot of sound cues, a lot of alerts to, to look at and you, you have to stay glued to your monitors and make sure that you're there to do things and to, to react. When you're having a heavy trading day, you're, you're dealing with money and then that, in a matching Valorant, you want to win, you know, like you have a, you have a, you still have the same competitive hunger as a, as a trader He's trying to win, he's trying to, to, to make a good trade, make a lot of money for the, for the company. And in Valorant, it's the same, you know, I'm trying to win, I want to make a name for my team, I want my team to be the top. And nothing feels better than winning a big match, you know, we, we won the, the last challenges and it feels great. It feels great to, to put in the work and be able to win and, and have that. You don't have to ask. Oh, and now going the other way by Mummy entering back with nods of his own fine screen. Now needs to find a clue. No, you don't it's down to, to the ask. last two. Down to the last one for Dom. God damn it. All the way by his lonesome lower HP. But they can just Stone stick the spike in the sake of the form, and they're going to do just that. That's what a play. Holy cow. There, there's no real analysis needed other than what Mummy just did. Growing up in Brooklyn, I had a lot of friends that were, we just roam the streets, see what trouble we can get into, see where we can have some fun, play some stickball, skateboard around. Everyone was competing, everyone was trying to, to, to one-up each other, everyone was trying to figure out who's the best at this, who's the best at that. We're trying to like learn a kickflip before anyone else learns a kickflip, and everyone's trying to like prove themselves. So I felt compelled to be competitive from growing up in Brooklyn. My brother Johnny, he always was into video games. He was always competitive. I never could play because I was I was five at the time, six, and he's you know 11, 12, 13, and he's playing with his friends and he's having fun. And I'm watching him sitting on on the floor on the carpet, just looking up at the chair, watching him play. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. I wish I could play these games. And we only had one computer, so I would I, as soon as I would get home from school. I would hop on the computer before he would get home and then I would try to figure out how much time I have left, what, what, what could I do, can I mimic what he's doing, and uh, ever since then I just, I've grown to love it. When I first played Counter-Strike and I actually wanted to, to become the best at it, I was destroying people and I felt like I wanted to make a career out of this, so I always said to myself, I'm going to go as far as I go until I hit a wall. So I, I just, I competed until I hit the wall. I was kind of at a crossroads where it's like, all right, do I get a real job? So my brother, once again, John, he also uh, studied computer science. And his first job was on Wall Street, where I began working as well. And I, I loved it. It was intense, you know. They were always moving, you know. Everything was breathing for them. They were always trying to, to make money. They really didn't have free time. They were, they were just constantly figuring out what they needed to do to, to improve the infrastructure or to improve the, the services that they're trading on. Like just get a step ahead in, in the game that they're in. Nick was a trader. He was just this big like 6'4 guy that, that was always standing at his desk because he had a standing desk with his six monitors and he was just yelling across the room. And I unplugged one of his display port cables back to it and he was like, what happened? My fucking monitor went out. Can you? Fix it, Anthony, what's going on? <laughs> I was like, oh shit, Nick, my bad, my bad. But it's like, th those split seconds that you, you, you make these mistakes, it's like you can cost the company millions. It was always like an intense environment in that sense. For me, I wasn't really intimidated by it because I was used to it from playing Counter-Strike. I, I played a competitive game. I was on a team. I understand what it's like to work in a team environment. I understand what it's like to, to adapt. I understand all this stuff that makes you uh, a premier person in work or a person in, in, in that world, in the CS world. And I just, I fit in. They were, they were big into video games, they played everything. And they were just so intrigued by it, they would watch me. The, the CTO and the CEO would watch me and play my matches. And I was like, oh, this is cool, all right. And then sometimes I would get destroyed and they'd be like, oh, it happened, that's not my day. You know, it's just, it was just like funny banter for them, like they enjoyed it. Because I guess they had that same competitive mindset, so. It just fit hand in hand. 
then I got laid off. You know, the company wasn't doing well and I wasn't a vital asset to the company at that point in time. COVID came out and it, it slowed the rate of me looking for a job. I was kind of just like, you know what? Maybe let me just hold off, uh, see what else I can do. My friend had texted me, my friend Khalid, and he's like, uh, Valorant's coming out. I was kind of like, wow, this looks awesome. So let me just give it a go. Let me see what I can do with it. I played the game and I just said to myself, I'm just gonna become a pro with this. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna look for another job. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it my all. Fire up the flames. With Counter-Strike, I, I, I was much younger and I didn't really give it my fullest because I was still learning about what that means to give it your fullest. So after working on Wall Street and learning from people and learning about myself, I said, hey, let me play Valorant at a, at a level that I think I can compete in. Let me try to teach myself what it means to be a professional. We're always trying to commit the extra hours don't stay in the server for an extra couple hours and, and figure out variations of things and, and adaptations in certain situations, knowing when to select that pathway in this situation, in that split second moment, to make that round important, to make it a, a round win for your team. Good blind man. Off guard, going for a day, and so far, boy, opens with the kill, mommy though. Bad is not on set. So. Get his last guy in time, Android can have a lot of work to do. And these important matches, what separates winning and losing is these hectic moments. He gets some information that one is playing up towards heaven, possibly two. They are up there. Zam gonna push on the side. Mummy gonna take him down. It's Mummy on the jet this time around. You pointed it out. When you can think through these hectic moments and communicate to your team and, and hit the shot. That's what's important. We're more clutch than this jet right here as he swings on through Mummy to find three. And that's how I approach the game. Hey, I gotta tell you.